Okay, this is MAT 175, Lesson 24, Section 6.2, Trigonometric Functions, the Unit Circle Approach. Here we have a table that lists uh, 30, 45, and 60, and so basically um, this is what you know you may see in some textbooks, but it is far easier to use the unit circle as your guide. So on the unit circle, you can basically come up with any value on the unit circle uh, based on the first quadrant. So here for 30 degrees, okay, we said that um, we have uh, cosine is square root 3 over 2, sine is 1 half, and tangent is square root 3 over 2, square root 3 over 3 rather. For 45 degrees, we have square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2 for cosine and sine, tangent is 1. And for uh, 60 degrees, we're gonna, we have here uh, square root 3 over 2 for cosine, sine is one half and tangent is square root of three so based on that first quadrant there and then this would be 90 degrees that would be x is zero y is one for cosine sine tangent is undefined here at zero degrees we have one zero cosine is one sine is zero tangent is also at zero so you're going to need to reconstruct this um, this uh, unit circle in the first quadrant. And this is going to be part of our first quiz that we're going to have. So you need to commit this to memory because we're we're going to be having about three or four quizzes on on just this part of the of the of the unit circle. We'll start with the first quadrant and then we'll eventually work all the way around it. So you need to make sure that you can commit these values to memory, and we'll cover this in class. But I wanted to skip to this. Here we have pi over 4, which is the same thing as 45 degrees. Okay, so, um, and we know that 45 degrees is cosine and sine are both square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. Well, this is pi over 4. Well, here at 90 degrees, this is 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2 and so that would make this here 3 pi over 4 and so if we were to continue on around pi, this right here at this point this would be 4 pi over 4 or just pi and if we keep going then this would be 5 pi over 4 and so now we're in the third quadrant, and so now we still have the square root two over two and negative, as, but they're negative. The y coordinate is negative in quadrant three, and so is the x coordinate negative in uh, quadrant three. Whereas up here, the x coordinate is negative, but the y coordinate is positive. So cosine is going to be negative, sine is going to be positive. So this would be negative square root two over two and positive square root two over two for cosine sine, and then of course tangent is one. Uh, negative one rather and so here this is cosine and sine so tangent would be negative square root two over two over negative square root two over two so that becomes negative divided by negative is a positive so tangent is going to be a positive one for uh, five pi over four and here we have six pi over 4, but that simplifies to 3 pi over 2. 7 pi over 4. And so again, here we have for cosine, now x is positive in quadrant 4, y is negative. So cosine is going to be positive, sine is going to be negative. So what do you think is going to happen to tangent? Is that going to be a positive 1 or a negative 1? Well, it's going to be negative square root 2 over 2 or a positive square root of 2 over 2, so you should have said tangent is going to be a negative 1. Okay, so here 
for this value up here, tangent is going to be a positive 1. Okay, so let's take a look. That was for uh, values for pi over 4. Now let's take a look at, uh, now um, we're going to work these out in class as well. Um, the video would be too long if I were to go over all of it. So now we're going to take a look at pi over 6. Now here we have pi over 6 is the same as 30 degrees and so or 30 degrees and so cosine is square root of 3 over 2 sine is 1 half and so tangent what we said for pi over 6 is square root 3 over 3 and for um, 2 pi over 6 that comes out to be pi over 3 but well, we're going to look at pi over 3 separately. Here, this would be 3 pi over 6, but that simplifies to pi over 2. All right. uh, and then we have 4 pi over 6, and that comes out to be um, 2 pi over 3. So that would be part of the pi over 3 values. And then we have 5 pi over 6, and then 6 pi over 6 is the same as pi, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, but that's the same as 4 pi over 3, so we're going to look at that over here, 9 pi over 6, and that's the same as 3 pi over 2. Uh, 10 pi over 6 is the same as 4 pi over 3. So we're going to look at that, um, or rather 5 pi over 3. And so we're going to look at that over here. And then 11 pi over 6 is here and then 12 pi over 6, but that simplifies out to just 2 pi. Okay, so with that, given that, we see that pi over 6 is 3 pi over 2 and 1 half. So 5 pi over 6 is negative square root, it's going to be the same values but different signs. We have square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half, but we're in quadrant 2, so x is negative, x has negative values, y has positive values, so this would be negative square root of 3 over 2. 7 pi over 6, same values as uh, square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half, but now this would be negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. And then 11 pi over 6 would be again square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half, but now it would be positive square root of 3 over 2 and a negative 1 half. And the way you can tell whether the values are the same is you look at the denominator. And if the denominator has a 6 in it, then you know it has, is going to have the same values as pi over 6. So um, let's back up here for a minute. Another thing to notice is right here, this right here at 5 pi over 6 is pi over 6 from the point to the x axis. So if we took 5, if we took if this is 6 pi over 6 here, or pi, if we took 6 pi over 6 minus 5 pi over 6, we get pi over 6. So all of these values here are pi over 6 from the x-axis. And of course this one here will be as well. Okay, so that's another thing to keep in mind. And so we look at this in reference, we always look at this in reference to the x-axis. Now here we have pi over 3. And pi over 3 has 1 half and square root 3 over 2 for values, for cosine and sine. And so uh, at 2 pi over 3, we're going to have 1 half and square root 3 over 2, but because we're in quadrant 2, 
the x coordinate or cosine is going to be negative. Sine is going to be positive. And then um, this would be 3 pi over 3 here, but you know that's we're, we're going to look. We've already looked at that. That's just pi. We've already looked at pi already. This is 4 pi over 3, and so we're going to use the same values as pi over 3, 1 half square root of 3 over 2, so this would be negative 1 half, negative square root of 3 over 2, because we're in quadrant 3, and the x and the y coordinates in quadrant 3 are negative, so these two, the cosine and sine, are both going to be negative. <coughs> and then um, 5 pi over 3 will be, when we're in quadrant 4, and that's 1 half, and square root of 3, negative square root of 3 over 2, and so we can see again that these values are pi over 3 from the x-axis all the way around. Pi over 3 and pi over 3. And that's always in reference to the x-axis. So you can see that with pi over 3 they kind of stretch out away from the x-axis. <laughs> pi over 6 is more squeezed, more like scrunched down, closer to the x-axis. It's, it's closer together to the x-axis. So I think pi over 6 is going to be closer to the x-axis. Pi over 3 is more like, is further away. Um, so that's one way to kind of remember that. Okay. go over these in class because we won't have enough the table go too long. Alright, and so um, that's it for this uh, video lesson and uh, we'll go over more of this in class.